<laughs> I just do it. I do it for like three years. Welcome back to the pan with Bobby and Dan. Another week, another episode. That was good. I like that actually. No, no, we can. No, I like we can that. Use... another week, another no, episode. We can. Nah, we can use it. You know what? I... Like we can, we can use that one. You know what I mean? I know this is like the thirtieth try. And like maybe you're a little tired of it because, like, you know, I kind of am too. But like, you know, I think we can use that one. You know, I want you guys to know tries one through twenty nine were actually just him screaming it, like at an audible level, to only, uh, only, only pythons. You're kind of like you're. I think you're just delusional at this point, dude. I mean, one one could make the case that I'm delusional. However, I would make the case that I'm just. I'm just fun with my imagine, my own imagination. I just like to. Have... You're just a, fun, a funky, spunky guy. Yeah. Likes to have a good time. I mean, like me too. Like they, they don't call me Daniel Life of the Party is here for nothing. Life of the Party is here. You know, like, you know. Speaking of life of the party, you know what's not the life of the party though? I'm ready. This freaking cold weather. It's like it, it's cold. It's rainy. It's cloudy. Which obviously they go kind of hand in hand. There's a slight breeze. Oh, and everyone's miserable today for some reason that I've come in contact with, excluding I, I, you. I mean, it's kind of the vibe today. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no. It's, it's like a it's it's a rainy day. I mean, it was like um, my mom texted me and she's like, "You busy?" And me, obviously, I'm like, "Hell yeah." No. Hell no, I don't do anything in my life. But um, she was like, I think a package got dropped off. I got a new vacuum. And instead of like, because the back door, which is, you know, not, it's like. Not the front door. Well, not the front door, but like the back door has like an overhang where normally like if it's raining and you got a package, you can see it when you pull in the driveway. Oh. And you can like see it and you just like normally slap it there. But this dude just like left it out there and I went to go check and it was like the box was just like so, caving in on itself. Oh, that's brutal. So I was, me being, you know, the great son I am. You're welcome, mom. But um, brought it inside. You know me, great guy. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you wet. Know, I've only had one of my packages get severely wet, and like I think it was, uh, it might have been like a backpack that I ordered or a hoodie, but it had plastic on the inside of the cover, like the cardboard. Yeah. So like it was double wrapped essentially. That's so good. the actual item didn't get wet, but I was like, I was like, great, great. I'm gonna have to go through this RMA process to figure out how to return something. Great, dude. Because honestly, I've had this because I buy a lot of stuff online. If yeah. it breaks, I just buy a new one. I I don't want to go through the process of figuring out how to send shit back. You know, I'd really hate to like disagree with you, but I can't. It's like I've had two packages since living in this apartment just get stolen, and like. I've gone through the process of, like, trying to, um, like, get it back the first time. And then, like, after never hearing anything back, the second time it happened, I was just like, oh, well, I hope they like their shirts. I was uh, I'm glad I was able to help them out. Jeez, man. But that's just the life we live, I guess. No, it's not the life we live. People suck. This weather sucks. This day, I'm going to say, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this day sucks. And I'm only saying that because when I woke up today... It, like you could have told me I got beat I got, I got beat in my sleep like I just woke up like ugh what day is this where am I do I have to go to class today do I have to do anything today if I just casually stay sleeping will anyone know or care probably not to be honest but you probably, like maybe you wanted to you could have just slept the day away I very well could have I felt like I could have yeah sometimes you gotta test your limits I did test my limits. I was like, you know what? I'm going back to bed for a half hour. And you would think that would make me late for class because somehow my, like, I have my morning routine laid out to where I basically get to class with five to ten minutes to spare. And that five to ten minutes is what I allow myself for traffic time. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is my routine from waking up to getting to class is actually pretty, like, strict time-wise. Oh, yeah. I woke up a half hour late today, and I still made it to class on time, and I don't know how. Because I don't know what corners I cut. Because, it, like, it's not like I wore a hat today, you know, I didn't, it's not like I didn't comb my hair, mm -hmm. you know, still brush my teethies all the same. It's just, I managed to apparently do it in half the time. Well, I mean, like, to be fair, you kind of... When you pulled up to my place, you kind of just pulled out with no clothes. So, like, I don't know if that was it. Shit, you're right. I've been naked this whole time. You ever have those dreams? Um, you know, not for a while. I there, There's been scenarios where I've been vastly inconvenienced in my dreams with that type of stuff. Like, I remember there was a dream where I was just driving around with no pants on. 
And my dream self was just worried, like, dang, someone's going to pull up beside me and see that I'm not wearing pants. They're going to think I'm weird for driving without pants. That's it. And that's been, like, th- there's also been, like, oh, I'm at a wedding, and <laughs> what's that? I don't have my pants on, but I'm, like, I'm, I'm never naked, thankfully. Yeah. Like, I think it's more, it's not even, like, a fear of, like, me forgetting to get dressed or anything. I think it's more or less just a fear of me being mildly inconvenienced more that's, than anything. That's fair. I, I mean... I don't think I'd ever want to be naked in front of someone that I didn't want to be naked in front of, you know uh, what I mean? Well, that's that's a fair, fair you think, thing. You think like, so? <laughs> I mean, because if you want to be naked in front of someone that didn't want to see you naked, well, to be quite honest, that's another thing that's that a, we don't have to go into. But well, That's not just another problem. Yeah, really. But, yeah, that's that's a fetish, people. people. People like the idea of people seeing them naked without you wanting to see them naked just know there is if you can think of a fetish it's out there and bobby has it he, oh sorry. all right I so to, maybe not sorry you know me. actually i was talking about fetishes kind of recently with some of my friends okay and you know you can make yourself feel as vanilla as you want when you compare yourself to some of the extreme ones out there i don't really want to talk about them because they quite gross me out but still you know, I, like, if, if if you never told me any of the other fetish, fetishes out there, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of kinky. <laughs> but then, nope, not at all. Not even a hair's comparison. I, I'm just not vanilla. I mean, you can make money off <coughs> anything if you got, I mean, if you have a nice feet, there's a market. True. <laughs> it always goes back to selling feet pics. I wish I had, I, I wish I had women's feet just so I could catfish people on the internet to pay for college yeah that's very fair i mean some people just make bank off that and it's can't knock the hustle true maybe you should become like an e-girl then um i'm halfway there (coughs) yeah halfway i I, sure so like what's the halfway mark um well you know i'm 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 on the internet Mm -hmm. more often than not um i I'm existing, so I think it gives me the fifty percent. All right, fair, yeah. And, um, a, a few key components of that are missing, but like, you know, that's fine. I'm entitled it's to fine. it. It's fine. It's a new day. I have to cough so bad, and no amount of water is helping me. That's only. I mean, just turn away. You're, you know what? You're I'm good, Captain. Do, I'm gonna go over here in the corner, and I'm gonna cough. Okay, you're gonna. <laughs> you just just coughed in my closet, so like that's fine. Yeah, you know your clothes are covered in coronavirus now. Well, that's fine. I just will wear them every day. Anywho, how has your week been, Dan? Uh, fine. Yeah. Yeah, come sit down. <laughs> yeah, you know, this week has gone by very fast and very slow at the same time. It's Tuesday. So. Yeah. Well, I meant like from the last time we've done the podcast. Okay. Because over the weekend. I realized this yesterday, I really don't have a recollection of Saturday. And it's not because I was partying hard or anything. It's just my day was so menial Yeah. that it might as well have just not happened. I understand that, yeah. And because of that, it feels like, you know, it's gone by, oh, really fast. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, it's like, wow, that week leading up to that point kind of dragged for me yeah. just because i had essays on essays yeah but this week <laughs> your boy is essay free because i'm gonna get slammed with essays next week <laughs> yeah. i mean if it's an every other week kind of thing it's it's okay yeah you know uh, an all-nighter every other week isn't so bad mm. but you know that's just because i procrastinate and you? hate myself no way not you <laughs> no not at all i don't know what pr- procrastinating is no. you know what my professor just assigned me tell me a 15 page research project mm-hmm. which is like you know i've i've I, you guys know of my screenplay you know that was a huge success and my other creative and writing endeavors so uh, you know writing isn't so much the issue but it's more like the research part that bothers me because he's like yeah i want you guys to use about 15 or so different sources and i'm like wow so it's a real research project because like I've had, you know, teachers like, yeah, this is a research paper and their like requirements are three sources and they give you two of them. Mm-hmm. But this is, this is the big leagues for this guy. The big leagues. Yes, of course. Yeah. Of course but, uh, I got that today and it's, it's actually 50% of my final grade well, <laughs> for the class. I guess you just gotta, you gotta buckle up, brother. Yeah. You're in it. Yeah, that's it's time to shine. It's the big leagues with this one, honestly. Well, you're in college. It's kind of, you know, 
the last education, like the last line, <laughs> the last line of defense. The last line of defense. Jokes on you, Dan. I'm going to super college afterwards. Uh, sky high. No, 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 no. Sky, uh, sky. Fuck. Actually, I can't think of a a good pun. I'm at a loss. I'll I'll give you a second. No, it's not coming to me. You know, you know what's great? I've watched one of your eyes progressively get redder and redder as as this conversation's gone on. Is it? Yeah, Dan's dying on me, guys. Yeah, I th- I felt like I was dying earlier today. Yeah. Do you um? Do you get your allergies? Do you get allergies during the winter? Uh. At all? Yeah, a little bit. Mostly during the spring. Yeah. Anytime we get a break from like the frigid cold for like this rain that we've yeah. been getting, it just makes me cough and sneeze and have itchy eyes and basically have an unfun experience existing get ready for the fun yeah basically this is the fun also i've said like probably 90 times today try 80 more all right you gotta meet your quota you got it um like what's the first like uh like topic like you got <laughs> Like what? Like, like what is it? My favorite is when someone's standing up in front of the class and they hit, hit they hit you with the like uh <laughs> when they're trying to gather their thoughts because every I mean everyone does it the the you know the sentence fillers the uh ums likes yeah and so on but at the same time everyone is perfectly okay if you just take like the three seconds of silence you don't have to fill it in with the like uh. <laughs> <laughs> You don't really have to, you know, like, that's, um, that's the funny part. Like, uh... Exactly. It's fine. You really, we don't have to make that noise while we think. But for I, some reason, we think that's more socially acceptable than the silence. We are human beings. We are human beings. Are we? B-E-A-N-S. Human beings. Human beings. Bean. What kind of bean would you be if you were a bean? Lima. Lima? Maybe a lima bean. Yeah, you'd be a lima bean. Maybe probably a kidney bean. I could see you as a lima bean. You think so? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't like this. I'd be a I'd be a black bean. Okay. Whatever makes you happy. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever like brightens your day. I mean, I guess like if you want to talk about beans, we talk about fucking beans. Like, we can talk about beans because they're in my theater. No, joking aside. Um. I'm talking about fucking. I'm beans. actually gonna jump right into the coronavirus because I want to get this out of the way because we've talked about this for like two weeks in a row I so I'd far. Rather just talk about beans. All right. So the coronavirus actually got a name. Beans. What is it? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep trying to get you to drop this bean talk because I've ran out of beans that I know of to be honest. Black beans, brown beans, red beans, yellow beans, blue beans, kidney beans, can you bean Chick- more? No. I was gonna say chickpeas, but that's not a bean. Oh, the peas. <laughs> Anyways, coronavirus actually got an official name, like the specific one that's deadly. What do they call it? They're calling it COVID-19. Yeah, I've heard better. C-O-V-I-D hyphen 19. I've heard better. And this is uh, the World Health Organization, the WHO that you like to like the, to joke who? about. The WHO? Who is it? The WHO? <laughs> Got um. <laughs> so apparently now there's over 42,000 cases and over 1,000 deaths as nice. of right now. Let's keep it calm. Or as of right now, yeah. I would say this is updated about four or five hours ago. So yeah. 42,000 yeah. cases, 1,000 deaths, and some change, I imagine. And this is a quote from the World Health Organization for when the director, Dr. I think it was Tedros. Tedros Arhormo Gahabrisas. Yes. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his no, name. Flawless. I'm just going to hope that's how it Absolutely is. Absolutely flawless. He goes, we had to find a name that did not refer to a de- geological location, an animal, or an individual group or people. Group of people. Cool. So that I thought that was interesting though because it's kind of we were talking about like the the social aspect of the coronavirus last time how like there there there's like subtle to not so subtle racism floating around just because of this disease like not even like the people are having a problem with these group of people like they're not innately racist but they're trying to be like now nah, we should stay away you know we talked yeah. about it so that's that's nice it's a nice clean name I think COVID nineteen flows off the tongue. Hopefully it doesn't sure. become as renowned as, say, like, Ebola or something. Well, I mean, Ebola got memed, though, to be quite yeah. fair. Like, Ebola. our generation was like, Ebola? <laughs> That's a knee slapper. Let's yeah. make the jokes. Yeah, well, I mean, Ebola didn't do too much. It was... Okay, it didn't do too much to civilize, like, to, to our to our type of well, yeah, places. I'm, say- I'm saying to us, like, you can get that affected by it. 
All right, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, memeing things that you're di- that you're that you're uh, far away from actually is okay. Well, yeah, it makes it okay because yeah. it's like that's not affecting me. And then when it does, you're like, damn, damn, might you be. You can't meme that because it's affecting me. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Hey, hey guys, it's, it's my fault. What a very modern way of thinking, Dan. I mean, it's a very uh, some some would say progressive. Some would, would not. Would you call it progressive? I wouldn't, but some would, maybe. Y- you know. I hope you get COVID-19, Dan. Me too. Just so you can joke about it, right? Because that's that's how it goes. Well, yeah, it's like, you can't make, you know, like, you can't make cancer jokes because that's fucked up. But, like, if you got it, let them fly. It's that kind of thing. Dang, can't wait for my cancer card so I can finally start making those jokes. Oh, man. It's in the mail. (laughs) Thank you. You know, I always wanted to make fun of kids with cancer, but, you know, they always say I can't until I have cancer. That was like, do you remember, um, there was that girl who said that, like, all kids with cancer are born to die, and she, like, stuck by that, like, yeah. she died on that hill? Oh, you're telling, the, 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 cause she was super religious, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, she was, like, really doubling down on the God has a plan for everyone thing. Yeah. And, right, you're talking about the one that was like, so, like, what about kids with cancer? And she's like, that was their plan. Yeah, they were born to die. They were it, born to everyone die. Everyone was just kind of like. That that's literally like when you raise your finger and like you like narrow your eyes. Like how exactly just, do you dispute that claim? You, you bust up the fucking app case. You're like moving around a little bit. You're like, uh, <laughs> it's like that scene uh from The Hangover when he's counting cards. Like all the fr- like the equations flow through oh, the yeah, air. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see that. But I mean, you know, I'm telling you, it's if you want a good conspiracy theory, China, little overpopulated. There's only one way to get over it, people. You know, it's bad that that, like... Like, it's it's fucked, but like, that could genuinely be a possibility if you're that yeah. kind of freak. I wonder, that. I wonder if the... Because I know, like, it comes from... It, it came from bats originally. I wonder if it did actually, though, come out as, like, a chemical, like, warfare type of thing. I mean, maybe we'll hear about it in, like, 40 years where it's like, remember that, uh... True, I... I always love reading about conspiracy theories. Me too. Especially about this type of stuff. That's my guilty pleasure is conspiracy theories are like just some cursed shit. Yeah, I know you and your cursed stuff, Dan. Well, like, you know, I'm I'm not talking like decapitating people. I'm talking like ghost stories or shit, like haunted places. Oh, yeah, like the hauntings. Have you ever watched The Haunting on the Hill House on Netflix? No. I recommend it. Yeah. Very good. Told me that. Do you remember when there was a haunting in Connecticut, that movie? Yes. And apparently it, that was good. It's based on a real story, apparently. A few of them. Yeah. Oh, they did make multiple. Yeah. Uh, didn't they make, like, a haunting Massachusetts or something? I thought they did, like, different states in New England. I'm not too sure. I know there is, like, the haunting Connecticut, and then there's, like, the haunting, and then, like, the like the specific Connecticut town. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's actually, it's weird how many horror movies are based in Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, Connecticut's, like, I don't know, it's very old. Like, I a mean, lot of the buildings have been here since, like, 1800s and shit. Thematically, New England would be the same, right? But, uh, but so, we definitely hear more in New England than, like, I don't know, New Jersey. I mean, like, Connecticut... Well, that's not New England, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, Connecticut's, like, just the shithole. True. You know, we... <laughs> taxes, potholes, and ghosts. That's all we got. Yeah. It's like, if you're not rich, fuck you. Anywho, though, yes. ty- tying back in the coronavirus, it's it's thankfully not called, like, the bat flu. Yeah. Because we ha- we've had the bird flu and the swine flu, but no, it's COVID-19. But speaking of birds... Ready. Birds of Prey had a horrible box office opening. Um, That's a good segue. That's a good segue. So, Birds of Prey is a movie starring Margaret Robbie, and a- as she's played... As she's playing, sorry, the Harley Quinn edition that kind of came out of the Suicide Squad movie. Yeah. So this was like her 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 movie. And basically well it's assumed the Time Warner they renamed the movie because their box office weekend did so bad people they they just okay. To pr- I'm gonna slow down real quick cuz it sounds very complicated. And I can help you if you want. <laughs> so apparently People are thinking that they renamed the film Birds of Prey to Harley Quinn Birds of Prey because they thought that no one saw their movie opening weekend because they didn't know that it was a Harley Quinn movie. Yeah. And, like, I would 
genuinely understand that. Would you understand that? Yeah. Do you think? Because, like, like, wasn't the title before that, like, Birds of Prey and Harley Quinn so-and-so? I mean, bottom line, it's DC. And DC, in terms of anything in marketing, is pretty whatever to begin with. So I wouldn't doubt that people just didn't know. Mm-hmm. Fair. Because, like, to my knowledge, the movie's pretty good. It's got an 80 on Rotten Tomato. Really? Yeah. Like, I've heard it's a very fun, entertaining movie. I guess it is R-rated as well. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's probably going to affect turnout a decent bit. Yeah. But, like, I've heard it's a good movie. So I wouldn't doubt if it's had a shitty box office just because people didn't know it actually was. Honestly, I at first I went into this thinking, like, oh, you, you know, that's really stupid, but I guess that makes sense, you yeah. know? People will just look at the Birds of Prey and leave it there. Yeah. So, I, it makes sense, Harley Quinn, colon, well, but, but I thought this was more interesting, because the movie already came out, you know? Well, that's the thing, I didn't even know it came out. They marketed this movie, like, as you're supposed to, like, three months or so in advance, and they were popping off with it for, like, two months, and then a month before it came out, it would just occasionally pop up mm. and they didn't really do any like media for it or anything. It just kind of came out and they're like, Hey, here it is. Yeah. You guys ready? And everyone's like, what, what came out? Yeah, I feel that. I like Margot Robbie though. I love Margot Robbie. I feel I like, love her. I feel like they should have used her name more to like promote this film. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So the title before it was, uh, was him. Hear me out. Ready? Ready for this convoluted title? Yeah. Birds of Prey and the fa- Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Yeah, yes. Yes, leave the, um... Yeah. Least, leave the name of the main character for your, like, comic book-related movie. Just slap it at the bottom at the end. Yeah, like, Just... nine words later and after a colon. Yeah, also, if I was reading Fabulous and Emancipated, I would just zone out at Fab... Or fantabulous or whatever yeah fantabulous that word for some reason i can't digest my eyes see it and just say fabulous in my head yeah i agree but it's just it's not why would you ever market it like that you know it is it is it's very wordy i don't know maybe they thought like oh wow people will see a title that's like nine words and they'll remember that no when people see long words in movie titles they're like fuck it whatever i mean I feel like that's hit or miss, really. I mean, like, if it's comically long, but it's also, they started with Birds of Prey. Those are four words. Wait. No. Sue me. It's three words. Mm, (laughs) It's one of those days. (laughs) Because I wanted to say it's, like, three words with no more than four letters in them. Oh, okay, yeah. Short words, and it's like, oh, catchy title. But then you (laughs) add that shit, and people just, uh. That's fair. And, you know, I guess, like, just because Birds of Prey was their tagline before that. Yeah. So... I, I guess if I just uh, saw that, I wouldn't even assume that that's a like a he, superhero movie. You know yeah. what I mean? I wouldn't probably even think that they were in the DC universe or anything like that. Yeah, like if I didn't see anything, just saw the title, I wouldn't think anything of it. Yeah, so wouldn't even cross my mind that Harley Quinn's in it. And well, unless I read all the way to the end, but knowing me, I wouldn't. Exactly. Yeah. So now it's just called Harley Quinn: colon, Birds of Prey. Yeah. So I mean, hopefully it does better in the second week because I still want to see the movie. I do too. It earned thirty three million domestically when it was projected to earn fifty to fifty five. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe this news news article will help them get their tickets sold. Hopefully. Well, okay. To be fair, I don't think it'll earn as much as people would think, just because Harley Quinn, like, that's a very um, niche kind of. I don't want to say niche character. Like, she's overly sexualized. The movie's rated R, so like, you're not gonna get like young girls like 15 or the 10 to 15 demographic you're not going to get those in the film just because it's rated r yeah but so they kind of lose out on those sales because i mean just a a female lead in the superhero universe would get sales just from that i mean i would take my niece you know to see wonder woman just because i want her to see like a woman lead as a superhero you know yeah just because she didn't get to see that often i can't take my niece to see this movie even though she definitely likes harley quinn i can't see her just because it's, you know, it is what it is now. Yeah, I understand that. I can I can see that perspective. The point I'm trying to make is I don't feel like Harley Quinn as a character would get enough sales from ever, anybody else that would go see a superhero movie. Yeah. Just from her name alone, like they were putting out. And that goes back to what you're saying. Like, they didn't really promote this movie 
much of anything. I know. Well, it was, I mean, like, she was on Hot Ones, and that's the majority of what our generation is, like, watching, I guess. You know, that's fair. I, I actually, <laughs> I know kind of who's a current celebrity, so, so-and-so, so just because Hot they're ones on too. Hot Ones. It's I love like, Sean Evans. I do, too. Well, it's like when you go on a media tour, you kind of, you got to hit all the spots. True. Very true. Speaking but, of, though. Well, speaking of Harley Quinn, there was the Joker. And then there was the Oscars. Because right. Phoenix... I also said Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright? <laughs> <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix, he Joaquin. was the best actor. But um, Parasite, I guess, fucking swept the Oscars. And also, on top of this, it was an all-time low in ratings for the Oscar this year. I also heard that. Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, well, you know... I feel like all these award shows, like the the viewership has gone down. Well, a because I don't feel like our generation is the type that tunes into it. Yeah. But like, we're 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 the we're the let's look at the headlines the next day and see what one type of people. Mm -hmm. To be fair. Yeah, I agree. And uh, oh God, I'm sorry, I can't get over the way you said the Joker. <laughs> the Joker. <laughs> the Joker. But um, I don't know. Parasite. Parasite one. I haven't seen it. It's like a. Do you know what it's about? No. It, well, it's about um korean like the social construct of korea like the classes so, and stuff of that nature i haven't watched it yet but obviously best picture and i've heard nothing but good things about it you just gotta watch the subtitles because it's not dubbed in english or anything mm -hmm. which i think is better so apparently it's uh it's about a poor family that cons their way into becoming servants of a really rich family mm -hmm. but then it gets complicated because like they kind of get found out partially and it's it's very convoluted i guess it's a like a mystery drama type okay and it's directed by uh bong bong joon ho or bong joon hu and Thank he's you. also he's also the writer he wrote like he wrote the story he wrote the screenplay he's directed it he uh i think he won what well, i think he won an award for best screenplay as well i know parasite in itself i think got four awards at the oscars yeah I no think. they they kind of cleaned house with it. And I think he got one for his writing, too, which is cool. Yeah. Um, um, Renee Zellweger, she won Best Actress for Judy, which Judy. I also didn't see. I Honestly, I didn't... I didn't even know that that movie was good. That's how I feel about a lot of movies that win awards, to be honest. Well, no, I've heard, I've heard of Judy. I just didn't know like he was like an actively good movie. I think my parents saw it, and they didn't even like it. Yeah. Um, Taika Waititi won a... Best Adapted Screenplay for Jojo Rabbit. And I guess people were mad about that. Well, it was like a very niche community was mad about it because there was, um, I think there was like a woman of color also nominated for it, but he won it. But it's mm -hmm. also like he's the first like indigenous person to win that award. So it was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, very weird complaining. You know, I hate when they attach like a race onto these award it, things. It's so, yeah, it's so stupid. Like, I, I hate the argument of, yeah, he only won because he's white. I mean, it's, I, I will say. Like, that for, can be the case. No, I will say for the Oscars and like shit like that, it's very fucking like white dominated, I guess. That's definitely true, but I, I feel like you're also like kind of demeaning the case of whitewashing when you make that claim every time that someone of color gets beat out. Well, I mean, like, obviously, this is, like, objectively, like, this film is better than the other one. doesn't oh, matter yeah, who the course. fuck made it. But a lot of times, it's just like, hey, yeah, give it to Brad Pitt again. Give it to Brad Pitt. He, uh, didn't he win Best Supporting Actor for Once a Time in... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Yeah. yeah. And then Laura Dern won Best Supporting Actress in Marriage Story. Marriage mm -hmm. Story is really good, but I also don't even know who Laura Dern was. No. I think she was actually the, um, lawyer. That would make a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, she yes, she was. Yeah. And then... Joaquin they, Phoenix! Joaquin Phoenix won for I'm so Best happy actor. for him. Me too. He did a lot to his body for that film. That yeah. I didn't realize. Like, he, like, I didn't realize... You know how, like, he was very skinny for yeah. the uh, movie? I didn't realize that his actual body type is on the bigger side. Yeah. So that's, that, like, that's a crazy transformation. Yeah, no, he had to do a lot. He Good uh, for him. Yeah. The just... only other actor that I see do, like, those crazy body transformations nowadays is, like, I don't know, Christian Bale does that a lot. Yeah, but he went from, like, you could see his ribs and everything to, like, Diesel as hell. Um, well, I know I know he got Diesel as hell for Batman, but, um... In American yeah. Hustle, he played a fat dude. American Hustle, yeah. Uh, but he, there was the one where, um, I think it was the mechanic he was very skinny, where he played a drug addict. 
That was probably it, yeah. Was it the mechanic? No, not the mechanic. I'm I'm on freaking... I'm on... You're on Mars, dude. Get your head in the game. Hold on, sorry. You got it. But I mean... That was a Jason Statham movie that popped into my head recently. It was, it's um... Fine. So he got... No, The Machinist, I think, is the one I'm thinking of where he got really skinny. That's close. But there was the one where he played Dick Cheney, which I think was his most recent, like... Transformation? Yeah, the... Because Vice, I think it was when he played Dick Cheney and like that's like I genuinely could barely tell that that was Christian yeah. Bale like I could not imagine putting my body through that kind of transformation mm. like I guess like you do what you gotta do but I don't know how healthy that would be like obviously he's putting himself at like unhealthy weights and shit but mm. that's an, you know that's kind of like a really ignored part of about acting is like how how you have to get in shape yeah for the film and like getting in shape doesn't always mean a good shape either yeah or just also like psychological tools sometimes it has on you but so, then i guess also like on top of everything oh yeah that's definitely it yeah that like he looks so different yeah between all three but um i guess eminem performed when they said that he performed 17 years late but it's also eminem needs just just retire man. all right okay so can you explain this whole 17 years late thing for me I, I guess it was like Eminem has said he was going to perform for years upon years. And I guess like the original time was like 17 years ago. For the Oscars in yeah, specific? Yeah, I'd imagine. Okay. And he just hasn't until now. But just Eminem does not put out good music anymore. At least to me. Like I just, he, he's not in his prime anymore. And like that's, that's fine. Like if he still enjoys putting out music, it's, it's good for him. I just can't listen to it. I don't even think it's objectively bad. I just think I'd rather listen to older Eminem. Yeah, well, I feel like everyone buddy would. Everyone buddy. Everyone. That's well, what. I, that's what I want to say. But everyone then, buddy. like, obviously not though, because his new album topped the charts like instantly. Did it? Yeah. How? By a lot. That shit's garbage. It's like, actual garbage. Like obviously objectively, but that shit was dogs. Like I think, I think he has been now a runner like. I think he's had an album in the uh, in the top for I think the last twenty years. I I can't I don't it's it was like what three weeks ago when that album came out. I don't remember. Yeah. There, there, I, we didn't talk about it much in the podcast just because we both agreed that we didn't really like the album, so we didn't really want to talk about it. Yeah. There was that song with Juice on it, but I mean that song wasn't even good. It was it's still bad. Yeah. I don't know. I think he's past his prime. He's got to give it up. And it's. It's whatever. Mm. It's well, whatever. Like, that picture with him and Ellen John was very cute, though. That's very cute. Where he was, like, dressed completely in black and Ellen John was in, like, pink. <laughs> oh, Ellen John was styling. Did you see him? He was strutting. Yeah. He was strutting. He, uh, he won uh, an award for the song that he composed for Rocket Man. Yeah. Very proud of him. Very Which makes sense. John. He is, like, you know. He, yeah. He's, you know, he, he, he makes music. He knows what he's doing, somewhat. He knows his way around the microphone. Uh, Toy Story 4 won Best Animated uh, Feature Film. Did you ever cool. see that? No. I couldn't bring myself to. I heard it was very sad. Dude. But, like, I couldn't bring myself to watch it. I'm not even going to think about it now because it is very freaking sad. Is it, like, is this the last one? You get or that should feel. should it be? It. Should it be? I mean, did you grow up watching them? Yeah, of course. I thought it should end at Toy Story 3. You you get a very strong sense of, like... Nostalgia? Or... Like, there's the nostalgia filter, but you also get this, like, like the... Damn, I'm not really a kid anymore feeling oh, from watching fuck, it. No, nah, fuck that. So it layers it on with the already like potent sadness. No, 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 no fuck that, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't it, need that. It really puts you in a spot to get hit in the feels. I'm good. Way more. Dude, Toy Story 3, I was kind of a wreck for. <laughs> I remember I was like holding back tears when they were going into the incinerator. I'm like, this isn't it. This isn't it. Yeah, <laughs> like, I remember that. Like, who's going to save them? And I'm like, they're toys. They're not going to get saved by people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, Buzzin' Woody in the incinerator! I got it. I know. Could you imagine how dumb that would have been if, like, a like just a, a, Andy comes out of nowhere? Yeah, he comes out of the fire. Stop! Or just a random worker's like, oh, those toys remind me of when I was a kid. Reaches in, grabs him casually. Yeah, something dumb like that. I don't know. Yeah, but they didn't. So they won best feature yeah. uh, animated feature film. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess they deserve it. I mean, I would have, I would have chosen Frozen too, but you know, hey, you can make, you want to make that claim. You want to try and persuade him? Honestly, I think I'm just a whore for Frozen. You could be. And I don't know why. Like, yeah, it's fine. I've never gotten more enjoyment than watching Frozen 2 with my niece. I mean, the cold never bothered you anyway, so... Yeah. True. I I guess I also just miss how nice the internet was when Frozen first came out. 
Yeah. yeah. That was a perfect time. I agree. It's very cute, but you know, you gotta let it go. I used two song titles right there, so uh, oh, crap. I'm on. I'm on your side, bud. All right. No, no, no. I'm on, let I'm it go. Your, no, no, no. I'm on your side. You may have Excuse heard me, over, uh, this actually was a thing yesterday. Did you hear about the broomstick challenge? Yeah, that was bullshit. Yo, you know what? Okay, so the broomstick challenge basically is, is a tweet came out saying that NASA scientists have confirmed that the gravitational pull on the Earth is stronger than it's ever been for this day and this day only. So today, brooms should be able to stand up on their own upright. Without, you know, leaning up against stuff. And people are like, what? And they went and tried it. And they're like, holy shit, this is crazy. But what does it mean that they're, like, wh- wh- like, how does this effect on gravity really, like, work on the brooms? Like, why is this working now of all days than rather than any other day? And why not any time in the past? Mm-hmm. Well, lo and behold, that tweet that <laughs> was like, yeah, NASA scientists confirmed that was complete bullshit and yeah. people are just standing up their brooms because they don't realize that those things kind of they're like well because they have just like unused brooms the flat bottom it's like no shit it's gonna stand up yeah like, exactly oh my god like, as long as your room's not effed up it's probably level you know it's probably yeah. weighted a decent bit as well at the bottom so yeah it, it, it can stand on its own but i saw that shit and i was like do people really believe this dude right so <laughs> many people were posting about it well the thing is like i kind of believed that at first too but until i thought about it because i mean i think it's once or twice a year there is uh, on the equator there's there's no shadows technically for an hour or two very cool like i thought oh it could be one of these cases where yeah. maybe you like that and then of course when you think about it it gets less and less true yeah, but it's like dude on this day right here right now your chair will stand on all four legs straight up. You don't even have to sit. You don't even have to touch it. It'll stand up straight. Stop. Well, to be no, fair, dude, do you ever insane. just casually stand up a broom without just leaning it up against something? No, why the fuck would I? <laughs> exactly. Which is why it got so popular. Because people were like, damn, this is only possible today because they've never fucking tried it before. I know. It's just so It's so stupid. But I, I don't know. It's funny. I'll it, give it that. It's it funny. is. I, I enjoyed seeing all the posts on social media. My my old my former boss actually sent me a Snapchat of uh, I think it was like two brooms just casually standing in his house and he was just like these fucking demons are at it again. Yeah, uh, it's even funnier because he's convinced his house is haunted and I'm convinced his house is haunted. I think we've talked about haunted haunted houses before too. Yeah. And we did earlier in the podcast, too. We, we did. Welcome back Welcome back to the Frying Pan Podcast, Dan. Full circle. Full circle. You've all been in a coma for seven years. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. You see, then someone's going to listen to it, and they're just going to freak out. You know, what was the... Who's the, um... Who's that guy? Was it in the Game Grumps that actually had, yeah. like, an active fear that he's been in a coma this whole time, and yeah. everything's been a fabrication of his, uh, mind? Yeah. That's... Yeah, and I heard That's that, and I, I kind of thought the same way, too, to be honest. I was like, yeah, maybe. Yeah? Yeah. He's in a coma for... Fuck it, why not? It's a very scary thought, because it's like one of those thoughts in philosophy where they're like, how can you prove we're not in the Matrix? Yeah. It's like, well, I mean, we can't, because the Matrix, and or in this case, the coma scenario, is so soundproof that we won't be able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So at this point, is it worth worrying about? Yeah. Right? But I guess when you think about it in terms of like you're in a coma, then that takes you out of it a little bit more. A little bit. Just a teensy (laughs) bit. Just a teensy bit more. Just a wee bit, brother. Gosh. What what would you do if you like were in a coma for like six months? Uh, Well, I don't think I'd know that I was in the coma for six months. Like like, like I just woke up? Yeah. Um, I mean, it depends. Like, do I, are there people around me? Do I know them? You know what I mean? Hmm. Interesting. Like, I mean, if I just woke up, I'd be like, fuck. Damn. Damn. Unlucky. <laughs> Rip. I'd be like, damn. I really woke up. That sucks. <laughs> and then, like, I'll, I'll just close my eyes. But, like, he has a pulse. He's woken up. I'm like, what the fuck? Nah, let me sleep, bro. Let me sleep. Go away. <laughs> leave me alone. Jeez. Speaking of leaving alone, we should leave bees alone because you know what they're starting to pollinate with? Hit me. 
they apparently are starting to love cannabis plants. And you guys may think, oh, great. Here's Robert coming in hot again with more weed-related news. Dude, honestly, every time you... Because like, you always like slapping a weed topic, and I always think, like, you put it in there, and you're just like, wait, wait, hear me out. Bees love weed. And then it's like, like you're just at, like, a board meeting, and they're like, oh, what is it? All right. Tell me, Bobby. Well, it's kind of it kind of is like that. This isn't actually related to smoking weed. It's more or less alluding to the fact that for some reason, bees either know, even though that cannabis plants are predominantly green and they don't have the flowery colors that like roses or lilies or etc. have, Daffodils. they don't even have that like sweet smell that would attract bees found in those petals. But for some reason, bees are attracted to them. And it, it, from this article, this um. This research came out of uh, Cornell University, and they were validating research that came out of um, Colorado in uh, Colorado State University. Mm -hmm. And bees are attracted to the cannabis plants because they actually have like a like a very high amount of pollen in them. That makes sense. And the this research is basically kind of alluding to the fact that with our high, uh, our increasing amount of cannabis production that we're having in our in our country because we're slowly legalizing it you know people are starting to grow more and more in legal states outside rather than indoors because of that mm -hmm. that we could have the weed industry and saving the bees could kind of work hand in hand mm -hmm. because of this and you know you may think like uh you may like you'd wonder kind of what the state like honey would be like believe it or not insects lack the cannabinoid receptors that we do to even intake the thc or whatever so there there isn't even like a worry that like they're coming out with thc honey out of, out of their systems like they're not affected by any of the thc or any of the chemicals found in the uh cannabis plant like to them it's just they're getting their pollen as if it was another flower yeah and to us they're pollinating it like it was another flower that's good so there's no like there there's no like anti-cannabis part of this like it it's just happens to be that cannabis has this high potency of pollen yeah and they're realizing this because people are starting to you know use these more yeah i it, mean it's crazy to me how um well first off it's like there's so many different articles and stories of like animals finding ways Obviously, like, not bees, but, like, to get high. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, dolphins, like, suck on puffer fishes to yeah, get they, high. Yeah, they smack around the puffer fish. Yeah. Yeah, and that's crazy to me. I, there's another one I can't remember off the top of my head. But, like, I don't know. Something like this, it's so interesting to see how useful bees in, like, certain insects that, like, we don't really care for are to the world. But, I mean, we care for bees, you know? Oh, but, yeah, but, I mean, people consider, like, bees, wasps, saying th same things. Yeah. Fuck both of them, but it's, like, Fair. bees... Super cool, good for the environment. Wasps. Very good. Waste of space. Should be just eradicated from the world. Mm. Fair. Well, I mean, okay, wasps, though. Don't do shit. Don't do shit. Do not. They are literally. They're assholes. They're literally just on the world to be assholes. Yeah, pretty much. They're literally just your high school bully. And only your high school bully. <laughs> who's selling meth out of the back of his car. Selling. That's specific. While you are the honeybee. And you are going to college, getting your education, living your best life. And the wasp comes by slash your tire and kills your dog and it's like what'd you do that for and he's like fuck it you know just because i could and you're like okay 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 They're very specific example it kind of sounds like you're speaking from uh i'm not saying, like, I'm not saying like, like bent or something like that like obviously i haven't done you know i haven't it's not something i know but like hmm. i mean it's so having the watch's name is like greg or you know it's just something <sighs> random of course and he's just fucking like slash your tire and kill my fucking dog i'd be like that's really weird that's really weird, Greg. Why the fuck would you do that? It's not math. It's like it's fine. It doesn't matter. Jesus. <laughs> Whenever someone uses the name Greg for a hypothetical person, it kills me because what? I've literally known one Greg my entire life, and I've never met a single other Greg. I feel that, but I feel like the most common is like people say like Steve, Steve, yeah, Steve, yeah, Michael, John, John, yeah, John, which is a common name. I say Joe, Joe, yeah, Joe's Joe Schmo. Common. You know. See, I never use Joe because uh, I like childhood friend's dad name was joe and i have a lot of respect for him that's, so i wouldn't that's fair i wouldn't deteriorate the name to be fair though i make hypotheticals so often i kind of just pull a name as soon as it comes to my oh. head so it'll be like butcher that's his name butcher. for some reason butch butch exactly but your name your fucking kid butcher that's sick <laughs> 
I'm gonna call him Butcher Razor D'Onofrio. Nice. I'm gonna name my kid Welder. Welder. We're call Weld for we're, short. Let's let's start bringing in uh, trade names yeah. for their first names, not even their last, last. Hey, construction, can you get down here? Construction. Hey, uh, taxi cab. Yeah. Uh, landscape. Landscape. What are you doing, bud? Oh my gosh. Hey, line cook. Like. <laughs> Circling back to cannabis and bees, though, another reason why bees liking hemp plants is actually really good is because hemp plants flower and uh, stay alive a lot later in the season than uh, their flowery counterparts. Oh, parts. Paths. So, like, th those sweeter flowers that I was talking about, they typically, you know, leave um, mid to late summer or so, okay. whereas hemp plants, they bloom and flower into the late seasons of fall, sometimes as late as November, depending on your area. You know, I mean, in our New England climate, they last about till the, around mid-November as well. So okay. it gives the bees access to more pollen as well longer in the season than they usually would. Okay. Which hopefully would help them kind of sure themselves up before the winter comes. See, I never knew that. I don't know. I guess I'm, well, first off, I'm not well-versed in plants. You know, even though I have it all tattooed on my arm, but that's fine. Don't worry about it. It's you know. There because it looks cute. Exactly. I mean, you know, that's fine. But I didn't know that, actually. Like, obviously, like, you know, plants die. Or when the winter comes, they, you know, yeah. they're not looking as nice as they were. Yeah, exactly. So it that's, like, one of the big positives that came out of this study from uh, Cornell. Um, Really, I can't even say anything. I'm like, oh, maybe we should legalize it. Like, no, I'm not mm -hmm. even going to make a case for legalization. I just think it's cool that bees can get something out of it. Maybe we yeah, should legalize bees. Legalize bees. Free <laughs> Free bees. Save the weed, man. Save the bees, man. Please. Nah, bro. Save the weed and legalize the bees. That's all I'm saying, dog. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to transition to this one, but um, I guess The Rock, his daughter, is uh, joining in his footsteps and joining the WWE. Well, right. I guess it's like a family tradition at this point. First off, The yes. Rock's daughter... Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I've never seen a picture of his uh, of his daughter before, so I'm actively googling it Simone, now. Simone Johnson. Simone. <laughs> um, I don't know why that's funny to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Like just the fact that this picture, <laughs> this picture that came up, his first picture on Google Images, he just looks so fucking. <laughs> He looks so not there. Right? Like, he, he just looks blasted. <laughs> he looks fucky. Yeah, he does not look there. But, um... Maybe he was, uh, working with the bees. Maybe he was working with the bees. But, um... Yeah, I don't know why I thought this was interesting. That, like... Because, you know, uh, The Rock's dad, who recently passed away, actually. Rest in peace. Uh, he was in WWE, and then, you know, The Rock. He smelled mm -hmm. The Rock is cooking. Um, shit like that, so... No, she's in it. You know, she is, she's 18, actually. Yeah, she, I, from pictures, it looks like she also works out, because her yeah. arms are pretty fucking big. She, well, she's got a great example. Well, oh, The Rock's small. The Rock's small? Well, I mean, I put him to shame, but that's fine. That's fair. I, would we call you The Mountain, or? Um, I, I, you can just call me God, it's okay. That's fine. I feel like The Mountain is a great nickname. I mean, it is, but I feel like that's one you have to earn. Like, yeah, you you'd really have to. Have to you'd have to that. be, like, 6, 8, 400 pounds, just, like, pure muscle. Yeah. But that is not a lifestyle I'd want to live. That is not, that's not a lifestyle I don't even think I could get to. Yeah. But, um, only, honestly, the only main reason I want to talk about this, because it's, like, you know, good for her, but, um, I want to ask if you think you'd ever want to do WWE. Like, if you think you could, you know, okay. pop off in it. So... WWE, can we like include MMA in this as well? Of course. For the well, sake for the sake of the argument, or are we just gonna do WWE? We'll, we'll, first? we'll do WWE first. And okay. Then we'll do MMA. So for and WWE, then we'll do MMA. I I actually think it's quite interesting because uh, the vast majority of it is acting. You yeah. Know? And I I think it it's kind of cool when they make it look not so fake. Mm -hmm. But. Also, the demographic that finds WWE interesting is very far from the demographic that I align myself with. You see, it's, if that makes sense, does very, that make sense? Uh, yeah, it's very interesting when I think of like the demographic for it because it's like you have kids that are like, "Oh, wrestling's cool when when he jumps off the top rope and you know body slams him," and then you have forty year olds that are like gone 
off like Bud Light and they're like, yeah. I was like, that's my mental like image of what a forty year old WWE I, fan is. No, I definitely feel that. But then like people our age that like it, they're still wearing tap out and drinking Monster. I know it's very, it's a very I I wouldn't even say niche, but like kinda like okay. It's gonna sound fucked to say. I've just never met someone quote normal or in a different way like me. That's just like, oh yeah, I like I like to watch pro, I like to watch pro wrestling on the side. You know, yeah. like that's like their interest. You know, like people would say like I want, like to watch basketball. I haven't met someone yet that's like, yeah, I like to watch WWE. Yeah, I think it's uh, fun. Yeah, I love when um I don't even know who's in it anymore. I know actually Undertaker. I'm pretty sure is a senator at this point. What? I don't know if it's The Undertaker or if it's um, somebody else during that era, but I'm pretty sure he's a senator at this point. I think he's like senator of Texas or governor, something like that. Mm. You want to look it up for me real quick? Uh, governor. WWE look, governor. Yeah, you just look that up. All right, so let's see. Let's see, am I right? Jesse Ventura is an American media personality, author, retired professional wrestler, and former politician who served as the mayor of Brooklyn Park and governor of Minnesota. Who is this guy? No, there's a different one. There's definitely... No. I'm pretty sure it's The Undertaker. Take take my word for it. Don't yeah? look it up. Nobody look it up. Don't pretend like you know it. Just listen to me. I'm right, as always. Okay. You're fair. Fair. All right. Thank you for sorry, understanding. Sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry, Dan. I know. Accepted, I guess. Huh. Um. Any circling back though to 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 your original question of like if I would see myself in it, no, I don't think I could. But that's just because but, like I would I wouldn't be comfortable being put in a position. that's like all right, kid, you're going out there and you're gonna get fucking lariated today. Yeah. But all right, how about this? You have to. What would your thing be? You know how like all of them have a thing. No. How do you mean? Because, well, like, you know... Like a special move? Well, or? no, they all had, like, their... Because, like, the whole thing with WWE, to my knowledge, is, like, everything had, like, a storyline to it. Yeah, it's very personality like, they, they all had their character and shit. Like, Undertaker was the Undertaker. The Undertaker. Which is, like, uh, I was dead, what, so, like, but big, now I'm alive. Big shows is just, I'm big? Yeah, or you had, like, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He... Is very cold all well, the time. He's, <laughs> well, he was the dude that he like slam the beers and then drink both of them. Oh, okay. So like mm. everyone has their thing. What would your thing be? My thing. Would you be the trash man? That's the tr- another example. The trash man. No, I would be. Gosh, what's something edgy? Got. I wish this was in the doc because dude, I would have spent right. an uncomfortable amount of time. Here, today I got one about for this. you. Because I've been thinking about it. Yeah? You could be the author. The author. And you're just pulling out, like, random books to beat people. <laughs> hell, hell, you're, yes. You're, your finishing move is, like... I just grab a thesaurus, and no. I just... <laughs> yeah, you, you pull out, like... Or no, oh, how about this? You take two Harry Potter books in each hand, and then, like, at, they're, like, woozy standing there, and you, like, clap them with it by, on both ears. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. <laughs> That is okay. The author, I like it. And there's like, like two that. steps from hell playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. You your thing could be you could be like the chef, and you're you like to, you just flip them. You flip them. <laughs> oh, d- uh, I'd be so good. I would like, um, I'd bust out one of those like you know the portable uh, stove tops, and <laughs> yes. like I have a really big one. And I slap it on there, and like I get the crowd into it. I'm like one. I flip them once, and like two. I flip them again, and then like I take them out of the pan. And I go. Three, and then like throw them out you know what i'm saying dude i could see that you're like your entrance and you come and wear a chef's hat and like a freaking uh like a tearaway uh chef's uniform and then you just <sighs> I'm, I'm just wearing an apron nothing else. <laughs> it's just a really tight apron that's that'd be frightening <laughs> if, I, if I have, a man ran at me wearing just a tight just apron. have a really tight apron and i have two like cast iron pans on my back my just, gosh like as i'm running out i pull them from the back and i'll go oh, 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 oh. I, if I just saw that out in like public, my brain would definitely stop functioning. I'd be like, "Oh, I am in a coma." That'd be I see. like you, that'd be something like you'd see a Times Square and be like, "Yeah, that's that's normal." It's unfortunate, but yeah, if it, it, literally that one spot, if that that I've been to so far in my life, yeah, that's the only place that would be kind of normal. Yeah, normal, normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good normal. You get people in fucking Elmo costumes. The weirdest is I remember one time I went and saw like a bodybuilding couple. Mm-hmm. A bodybuilding couple is very off-putting. It is, yeah. Um, 
you know, we were talking, I was talking about this last night, actually. So, do you think that, like, have you ever seen a professional runner's legs? Yeah. Do you find that unattractive? Like, that type of muscle definition? Like, I'm only saying mu- uh, runners in specific because, like, like, you can have really toned and really muscular legs, but then you have, like, the runner's version of that where you can actually see their individual muscle fibers and you can see each muscle grouping and ligaments. Yeah. Like, do you do you find that off-putting, like, to see on an individual? I don't even mean, like, attracted to romantically or sexually. I mean, like, do you find that off-putting? Um, to a degree. I think it's the same with, like, anybody who's in, like insanely toned really good shape well but i feel like i if someone's arms were like that i'd be fine with it but just the legs for some reason like i'm just not i i can't get myself to see that as normal or healthy for the legs see the arms are interesting too because like some people look like they have like stretched skin from it you know Mm -hmm. what i mean yeah it's very that's very off-putting like i think to a certain degree yes Mm -hmm. but like kind of got to do what you got to do especially if you're a runner yeah fair okay Fair. Circling back to the WWE, though, WWE though um, The Rock Star is going to be the fourth generation, I think, to enter the WWE in his family. I think it's, it was something like she's the first fourth generation wrestler, like in general. Yeah. Yeah. Something so like that. that's cool. Um, I that, wonder what her thing is. Can Can you smell what Simone Johnson is cooking? <laughs> she's just like actually cooking on stage <laughs> in the ring. Oh my gosh. They like just brought out an oven and she's just frying something up in a mm. pan. It's like, oh. I hope she, okay. like, her wrestler identity isn't something related to her dad's, like, yeah. geological, or not geological, what do you call rocks? Yeah, no, what do you call rocks? Ge- 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 geology. Yeah, ge- 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 geological. Sure. Sure. You, you got know, it. I'm, I'm having a stroke, believe it or not. I've noticed. I hope her wrestler name isn't rock related. I hope it's the pebble. The pebble. The, the rock's daughter. <laughs> that would be so depressing. I mean, it would carry weight, though. I, and coming into the ring is The Rock's daughter and everyone was just like, No, you can't yeah, say it like that. You gotta be like And in this corner yeah, Well that's not is... that's not that's not how like WWE works. Well okay, fine. That's not how they it... announce them as they're coming in though, they'll be like And You know, and then they walk in. The Rock's daughter it doesn't yeah. a, that doesn't have a nice ring yeah, to no, it. No, it doesn't. I but it's still everyone would be like, Oh, that's the Rock's daughter. Okay, yeah. You well, yeah, no shit, because that's, that's her name. Putting yourself that's her in fucking the, name. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you're deliberately putting yourself in your dad's shadow at that point. So, yeah, okay. Don't be the don't the Rock Jr. <laughs> <laughs> rock Jr. The Rock with boobs. Yeah, sure. Titty Rock. Titty Rock. That sounds like a band. It kind of does. It sounds like an indie band. Titty Rock. Or like an all-girl metal band. Oh, t- is that baby metal, titty metal? No. No. What? Also, baby metal is just like J-pop. Well, well, no, it's actually. I meant like the band. Japanese death metal, but you know. You know. I'm not with it. You're not with it. I don't it. feel it. All right. Uh, so that's cool though that she's joined the WWE. Yeah. Would you? Would you ever be a professional wrestler, Dan? I wouldn't want to do wrestling, but I'd like to do UFC. All right. So I feel like I would like to at some point in my life. So this goes back to UFC then. So, uh, what is it? J- J- is it John? John Bones Jones. John Bones Jones. Yeah, that's. It. I mean, that dude's like is... a fucking. Can you sit down, by the way? Sorry, I'm stretching. Okay. Um, he he's kept his title for the light heavyweight division in the UFC. I mean, the whole thing with it is like, he he's a good fighter. But he's been, I think he's been banned for like two or three years from doping. Mm -hmm. Like he's been taking steroids and then he was on cocaine or something. Yeah. So I got tendered it. And he's also just a pretty much genuine piece of shit to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. But he's like 28 and 1. He's good at fighting. Yeah, he's fighting. Dude's like 6'2", 210, whatever. So circling back to UFC, like you you would want to do mixed martial arts. Is that something you would rather see yourself doing? I think it would be fun. Like I... I could see myself doing taking like a class or something. Yeah, like I, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm relatively huge. Mm-hmm. on getting the shit beat out of me. Well, but... presume.